Welcome all to AK Pi lecture series. In this class, you will see which are the stages of the fertilization process. Then you will see how the species specific sperm egg recognition takes place. In 1677, Antony van Leeuwenhoek observed the human sperm through a primitive microscope and wrote a human being will originate from an animal cule in this sperm. He got it half right. Roughly three centuries later, Austin and Chan first described requirements necessary for sperm to fertilize oocyte. They independently concluded that the capacity of sperm for fertilization, that is the capacitation, was acquired only after a period of residence in the female reproductive tract, in the case of mammals or in the case of higher animals. Actually, sexual reproduction is a survival strategy which allows organisms to mix their genetic material within a species to produce genetic variation in the new generation. Fertilization is an essential process in sexual reproduction and has sequential steps also. The fertilization takes place either externally or internally. The process of fertilization involves four major steps. The first step is the sperm and egg make contact with each other of the same species and recognize that the both are of the same species and the second step is one sperm enters the egg and the third step is fusion of genetic material of sperm and egg and the fourth step is the activation of egg to begin development and these processes are conserved in invertebrates as well as in vertebrates. The first step is the recognition of egg and sperm. Many marine organisms release their gametes into the environment and the process is called broadcast spawning. And the broadcast spawning is a form of sexual reproduction used by many aquatic invertebrate animals. Not the vertebrate animals, invertebrate animals. In the process of broadcast spawning, billions of sperms or gametes, both egg and ova, uh, are spawned into the surrounding environment of the ocean. Most of these animals are either sessile or they move very slowly. How can sperm and eggs meet in such a dilute concentration and how can sperm be prevented from attempting to fertilize eggs of another species? That we will see. As I said before, many marine organisms release their gametes into the environment. Uh, that environment may be as small as a tight pool or a large as an ocean. So, in the environment of an organism, that is aquatic organism, uh, in, this, in the case of aquatic environment, the gametes from different species mix each other. The diagram here that represents the situation of species-specific recognition of matching gametes. These organisms are shared with other species here we mentioned the Acidian species, starfish, sea urchin, mouse and frog. Here we are considering about uh, the five species, five uh, animals, five types of animals. Okay, actually these organisms are shared with other species that may shed their gametes at the same time. Such organisms are faced with two problems. How can sperm and egg meet in such a dilute concentration? And how can sperm be prevented from uh, attempting to fertilize with uh, the eggs of another species? In simply, how the sperm recognizes the uh, egg of the same species and vice versa.
and two major mechanisms have evolved to solve these problems one is species specific spam attraction and the second one is species specific spam activation so the first one is attraction and the second one is activation i mentioned about the broadcast spawning in invertebrates and these are the main stages in the fertilization process in invertebrates okay so the first stage is the chemo attraction of sperm to egg by soluble molecules so the first stage is chemo attraction of sperm to egg by soluble molecules the second stage is the exocytosis of acrosomal vesicle of sperm to release its enzyme i think you are familiar with the acrosomal vesicle of sperm and it contains lot of enzymes that degrade the egg membrane here you can see the acrosomal reaction that means the release of the uh, digestive enzymes from the acrosomal vesicle into the on the egg membrane here you can see the release okay then the third step is the penetration of the egg penetration of egg envelope and the binding of sperm to extracellular envelope what is the extracellular envelope in the case of invertebrates it is vitelline membrane in the case of mammals it is zona pellucida we will discuss the same steps or the stages of fertilization in mammals in coming classes okay the fourth step is the fusion of egg and sperm membrane so here it is mentioned as fifth point in our flow chart it is mentioned as fourth point fusion of egg and sperm membrane the fusion of sperm and egg cell membrane or plasma membrane once a single sperm is fused with the plasma membrane of the egg then the egg prevent the further entry of sperms into the egg that process is called the prevention of polyspermy so the fifth stage is the prevention of polyspermy after finishing these five stages the nuclei will fuse means the pro nuclei the pro nuclei of sperm and egg fuse with each other inside the egg cytoplasm okay and the main stages in the fertilization process in mammals is given in this slide the first stage is the same as invertebrates the chemo attraction of sperm egg by soluble molecules and the second step is new one in the case of mammals the process of activation of sperm takes place which is called the capacitation and the third stage is binding of sperm to extracellular envelope here i mentioned that zona pellucida is the extracellular envelope of the egg in the case of mammals and after the binding of sperm to the extracellular envelope the exocytosis of the acrosomal vesicle or sperm to release its enzyme takes place and the fifth stage as the fifth stage the interaction of sperm membrane and the egg membrane takes place and the sixth step the activation of egg takes place or activation of egg metabolism occurs and in the seventh stage once the single sperm enters into the uh, egg cytoplasm or egg nuclei egg cell then the prevention of polyspermy takes place and the mixing of the pro nuclei of sperm and egg fusion is called amphimixis this is the eighth stage in the case of uh, mammals mammalian fertilization here we are discussing the uh, chemo attraction in non mammals so the first stage is chemo attraction of sperm to egg by soluble molecules species specific sperm attraction has been documented in numerous species including 
നൈഡേറിയൻസ് മൊളസ് എക്കനോഡേംസ് ആംഫീബിയൻസ് ആൻഡ് യൂറോകോഡൈറ്റ്സ് ഹിയർ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദിസ് മിഡിൽ പിക്ചർ സ്പെയിം യൂസേഴ്സ് വേരിയസ് മെക്കാനിസംസ് ഫോർ നേവിഗേഷൻ ഇൻ ഗ്രേഡിയൻസ് ഓഫ് കെമിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് ഫിസിക്കൽ ക്യൂസ് ഇൻ ദി കേസ് ഓഫ് മാമലീ മമേലിയൻ സ്പെയിം ഇറ്റ് റെസ്പോൺസ് ടു ദി തെർമോ തെർമൽ ചേഞ്ചസ് ആൻഡ് ദി റെസ്പോണ്ട് അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദി റിയോ ടാക്സസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ വേ റെസ്പോണ്ട് ടു ദി കീമോ ടാക്സസ് അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദി കീമോ ടാക്സസ് ബട്ട് ഇൻ ദി കേസ് ഓഫ് മറൈൻ ഇൻവെർട്ടിബ്രേറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് റെസ്പോൺസ് ഇൻ എ വേ ഓഫ് കീമോ ടാക്സസ് ഓൺലി നോട്ട് ദി റിയോ ടാക്സസ് ആൻഡ് തെർമോ ടാക്സസ് സോ ഇൻ ദി കേസ് ഓഫ് ഇൻവെർട്ടിബ്രേറ്റ്സ് മറൈൻ ഇൻവെർട്ടിബ്രേറ്റ്സ് the rio tax and the thermo taxes mechanism is absent so spam use various mechanisms for navigation in gradients of chemical and physical cues in many species spams are attracted towards the egg uh, of their species by chemo taxes that is by following a gradient of chemical secreted by the egg here consider this is the egg and the egg releases some chemicals into its environment but its gradient is higher towards the egg and lower away from the egg once this sperm reaches uh, reaches this peripheral region the sperm get attracted into the egg based on the uh, gradient of the chemical released by the egg and the mechanism of chemotaxis is differ among species and the team of and the chemotactic molecules are different in even in closely closely related species and this difference in chemotactic molecules among the closely related species ensures the species specific attraction here we will discuss two models that is chemo attraction in crc model and chemo attraction of mammalian model in this particular video we will discuss about crc model in detail and the mammalian model will discuss in another video here you can see the release of this pam by the uh, crc and here we are discussing about the chemo attraction the crc model in detail actually the spam chemotaxis the mechanism of spam chemotaxis has been primarily studied in sea urchin but also in other marine invertebrates of course and the sea urchins lives in colonies on the sea floor consider this is a sea floor and the sea urchins lives as colony on the sea floor and release the egg and the sperm into the sea water that is the fertilization happens externally upon spawning sperm and egg are dispensed on a macroscopic scale by water flow and the sperm and egg get dispersed in the environment according to the water flow here the, this is the picture of the sea urchin egg and this is the immature egg and this is the mature egg and the diameter of sea urchin egg is about 75 to 150 micrometer here you can see the genital opening of a uh, um, sea urchin and uh, uh inside of this urchin you can see the testis uh here in this picture you cannot um clearly observe the structure but it is positioned inside the body in aquatic animals the spermatozoa are maintained in repressed stage so or inactivated stage uh, or repressed metabolic stage in the testis by the help of characteristic concentration of ions pH or osmolarity of the gonadal environment so this spermatozoa kept in inactive condition inside the testes of uh, the aquatic animals
they get activated only after the release from the body into the environment. For example, in sea urchin, the sperm motility is acquired only after the sperms are spawned. So, inside the body of the sea urchin, this sperm was the immortal. So, they are a side. Actually, four factors influence the motility rate of sperm. The first three factors gives the ability to move, but the fourth factor, the chemotaxis, provide the direction to the sperm towards the spe uh, same species, egg. So, which are the first three points, which are the first three factors, pH or H plus ion, hydrogen ion concentration of environment and sperm. So, this is the first factor. And the second factor is sodium ion concentration of environment and sperm. The third factor is potassium concentration of environment and sperm. The fourth point that is chemotaxis which provides the direction to sperm towards the uh, same egg of the same species. I already mentioned that inside the testis the sperm he was inactive because of this pH that is inside the testis the pH is 7.2 consider this is the testis and the spams are located inside the testis uh, so inside the testis the spams cannot move because of the internal pH is 7.2 so their internal pH is kept low about 7.2 by the high concentration of carbon dioxide in the gonad. So, inside the gonad or inside the testis, concentration of carbon dioxide is higher. So, it, it, that is the reason why the pH is low. And the second factor is uh, by the high external K plus or potassium ion of the semen. Okay. However, once spam are spawned, consider this is the testis and this is the inner region of testis and inside the testis you can see here some spams or uh, spams are located. So, this is the environment that means this is the sea or ocean. So, once the, uh, the organism that is the sea urchin release the uh, sperm from the testes into, the, into their environment, the sperm exposed to higher pH of the uh, seawater and the extracellular potassium level is lower. That is, the extracellular potassium level is lower uh, in the seawater than the raw semen. So, inside the testis, the potassium level is high and outside the testis, that is in the environment, the potassium concentration is low. So, both outside pH means higher extracellular pH and lower concentration of potassium uh, in the seawater leads to the activation of sodium ion hydrogen ion exchanger on the plasma membrane of sperm so the activation of this exchanger leads to the release of hydrogen ions outside the cell that is outside the sperm cell into the environment and sodium into the sperm. As a result of H plus ion outflow, the net H plus ion concentration inside the sperm get reduced and results in the elevation of pH to about 7.6 or 7.4. Here it is mentioned as 7.4, so around 7.4 to 
these events triggers the hydrolysis of so these events triggers the hydrolysis of adenosine triphosphate that is atp by the mitochondrial oxidation of fatty acids so the hydrolysis of atp by the mitochondrial oxidation of fatty acid results in the activation of dynein atpase dynein and dynein is the motor component of axonim responsible for sperm flagellar movement actually dynein is an atpase is inactive below the ph of 7.3 so inside the testis the ph is 7.2 so at that condition the dynein atpase or the sperm will not get activated keep in mind that the ph inside the testis was 7.2 it is lower than 7.3 and uh, which was one of the reason that this pain kept inactivated inside the testis once dynein atpase get activated the motility and oxygen consumption of pain is activated the splitting of atp provides the energy for the flagella to wave and the pain begin swimming vigorously here you can see the speed get increased from 0 to 45 in the last slide you saw that extracellular potassium level is lower in the sea water than in the raw salmon the lower potassium level or potassium ion concentration of the external environment causes an immediate but transient increase in CMP level inside the cytoplasm of the pain. The elevation in CAMP concentration inside the cytoplasm of pain triggers the phosphorylation of axonemal proteins leading to pain motility. So, increase in CAMP leads to the activation of pka in the flagellum pka activates another other axonemal proteins leading to the spam motility so the decrease in external potassium ion concentration opens the potassium channel on the plasma membrane and it results in the efflux of potassium ions outside the plasma outside the spam cell and uh, results in the hyperpolarization of the plasma membrane of the spam which is independent of the intracellular ph of the spermatozoa in the last few slides you saw the three out of four factors which provides the ability to move towards the spam Next, you see how the spam performs the movement in a particular direction towards the egg of the same species. So, the fourth factor is chemotaxis that provides the direction to the spam towards the uh, egg of the same species. To increase the effectiveness of the target, eggs release egg release species-specific chemoattractant peptides and these peptides are made up of 8 to 15 amino acids in echinoderms direction is provided by small chemotactic peptides called spam activating peptides saps one such SAP has been isolated from the egg jelly of C. urchin Arabica pantulata is this is name of scientific name of one uh, C. urchin and 
this c urchin releases one such sap named resat resat actually resat is a 14 amino acid peptide and resat is specific for arbacea punctulata and does not attract sperm of other sea urchin species the other compound that is analogous to resat is spirat has been isolated from the purple sea urchin okay here in this picture you can see the egg of sea urchin as you know it is covered with egg jelly or jelly coat and resat diffuses readily from the egg jelly of the egg into the sea water and the released sperms migrate into the resat concentrated region means towards the egg itself and the mechanism of action of resat on the sperm will discuss in coming slides actually the sea urchin sperm have uh, receptors that is gc receptors in their cell membrane that bind resat the membrane spanning receptor gc is composed of three domains that is an extracellular domain that binds the chemo attractant resat and a short segment that spans the membrane and an intracellular catalytic domain that synthesizes cgmp gc receptors are one of the most densely packed membrane receptors and the flagellum harbors about 3 lakh gc copies or gc receptors means on flagellum of sea urchin you can see 3 lakh gc receptors when the extracellular side of the receptor binds with the resat it activates the guanylyl cyclase enzyme in the cytoplasmic side of the receptor so it activates guanylyl cyclase enzyme in the cytoplasmic side of the receptor consider this is the cytoplasmic side and this is the outer side and the active guanylyl cyclase causes sperm cell to produce more cgmp that is 3 prime to 5 prime 3 prime 5 prime cyclic guanosin monophosphate that is cgmp so activated guanyl cyclase causes the sperm cell to produce more cgmp this cgmp opens cyclic nucleotide gated k plus channel that is potassium ion channels that is cngk so this cgmp opens the cngk channel which is a potassium channel and this channel become open only when the cgmp binds with the cytoplasmic side of uh, cngk so cngk channel becomes open only when cgmp binds with the cytoplasmic side cytoplasmic domain of cngk when cngk uh, when cgmp is removed from the binding site of at the cngk cngk will close as a result the potassium went outside the cell and the cell become hyper polarized means means the voltage of sperm cell membrane becomes more negative means it lowered below the resting membrane potential 
here you can see rest membrane potential and here you can see uh, the voltage that is below the resting membrane potential because potassium channels potassium ions leaves the cell via the CNTK channel again the flagellum of this PAM harbors about 12,000 copies of CNTK channel so as a result of potassium outflux efflux the hyperpolarization takes place and the hyper, hyper polarization induces to open uh, sodium hydrogen ion exchanger that is SNH exchanger and results the efflux of H plus ions outside this beam causes the small intracellular alkalinization. So, the efflux of H plus ions towards the, towards the outside of the spam cell results in the alkalinization of alkalinization inside the spam. Up to the stage of opening of HCN channel that is HCN channel the cells is in hyperpolarized stage when cyclic nucleotide gated HCN channel opens it results an in influx of sodium ions which results the return to resting membrane potential from the hyperpolarized stage Next, at this stage, role of Katzper's channel coming into the picture. So, Katzper is one of the most complex voltage gated ion channel. Uh, these spam specific calcium channels are encoded by Katzper gene. And the same gene that controls the direction of spam migration in mice and even in human we are discussing about sea urchin isn't it even in sea urchin and in human the same casper protein is present the casper channels begins to open during the return of the cell potential cell membrane potential towards the resting membrane potential from the uh, hyperpolarized stage by the activation of HCN channel. So the activation or opening of Casper channels takes place by the action of HCN channel. As a result of the activation of Casper channel, it allows the influx of calcium ions from the seawater into the spam tail so this is the tail region of spam as a result of influx of calcium ions it activates both mitochondrial atp generating apparatus and the dynein atpas that stimulate flagellar movement in this spam next how the negative feedback mechanism takes place means how spam recovered from the stimulation of reset actually for that for the negative feedback mechanism or the recovery from the uh, stimulation some phosphatases and phosphodiesterases may be uh, they are pH sensitive they are pH sensitive these rapidly inactivate this GC receptor so these proteins inhibit the action of GC so GC is the receptor for reset once the GC get inhibited the signaling mechanism will not happen 
A fascinating feature of sea urchin spam is that a single chemoattractant molecule, a single RESAC molecule is enough to stimulate the GC receptor and, and can elicit a calcium response. The binding of a single RESAC molecule may be enough to provide direction for the spam which swims up along the concentration gradient of this compound until they reach the egg. Thus, we can say that resect function as a spam attracting peptide as well as spam activating peptide. In some organisms, the function of spam attraction and spam activation are performed by different compounds. Hope you understood the topic well. Thank you.